Hello and welcome to Automation Direct Media Series. We're going to discuss today how to select the correct PLC or how to choose the correct PLC for your application. So uh, we're going to break this down into three parts and I uh, hope you join us for all three parts. So part one, we'll discuss some of the PLCs, history, what is a PLC, just go through some simple stuff and uh, talk about the categories or classes. Okay, first thing as you see here we got some nice graphics of the PLCs that Automation Direct offers here. The first uh, is a brick unit which is the 05. I'm pointing here down at the bottom. It has an expandable slot and we go into that a little bit more later on. The next one is a 105 which has no expansion, has one communication port but it uh, has some options that people like which is a built-in DC power supply. Um, 06, a little bit bigger brick unit. Uh, a lot of nice I.O. here on it. You can add four option slots or four option cards to it and you have two communications ports and also this optional LCD readout which is really nice. 205 which is called a modular. The reason why we call this modular is you buy a rack depending on size, different size racks. You add CPU and add whatever kinds of IO cards, communications, uh, whatever you need there. Same thing with the 405 and also the 305. Okay, get into what is a PLC. A lot of customers are just getting into this. They know they need a PLC. Somebody referred them to a PLC company or referred them to us here at Automation Direct and said, hey, you need a PLC for your application. I've had customers do some odd things like uh, maybe they just needed to add a PLC to, uh, they're trying to control some lights at a art gallery or something like that. A PLC is a programmable logic controller. Uh, just think of it as an industrial computer and it contains hardware and you use software to program it and it can perform all kinds of controlled functions. I mean pretty much any type of function you could think of it could control depending on the PLC. Brief example, let's just say you've got a light sensor or some type of sensor and a box is going down a conveyor when that box comes across the sensor you want the programmable controller to do something turn on a timer for instance for 10 seconds okay so the PLC turns on that timer after 10 seconds you want a valve to turn on and fill the box full of star foam peanuts so that's what it does so versus having a person stand there filling it up all day long you can actually replace that put a PLC in it quicker faster let that person go do something else a little bit more beneficial so you can also think of PLCs as things like um, controlling uh, automated bottling plant. Um, think of things like amusement parks. A lot of the rides and stuff are controlled with uh, PLCs. So that's just some instances. Okay, before PLCs, what did we use? Well, relays were used. And to get a relay to do several different tasks, you had to buy different types of relays, different sizes of relays, and you had to wire them together to get these tasks accomplished. You'd open up an enclosure, it'd probably be about the size of a wall, and it'd have all these relays tied together and working simultaneously to control a machine. Well, now you can just put a PLC in there about the size of a shoebox or smaller to do the same task. Brief history of PLCs. It's first introduced in the late 1960s. Mr. Dick Morley of Bedford & Associates presented the first modular digital controller, hence the name Modicon. And if you've been in the PLC field, you've probably heard of Modicon, seen a Modicon. This happened in 1968. It was designed to eliminate the large cost of replacing relay-based machine control, like I was saying. These things were huge. The Modicon 084 was the world's first PLC in the commercial production. Okay, classes of PLCs. Nano PLCs. Uh, we call these nano because they're going to have 0 to 14 inputs and outputs. Anytime you see this little I.O. that means inputs, outputs. So this is your connection to the real world with devices. Um, nanos have 0 to 14 integrated I.O. package or they're a brick. Um, often not expandable like our DL05 is a nano but it does have one uh, expansion slot in it. Next one is going to be micro. It's going to be 15 I.O. up to 128 can be brick or modular. Uh, for instance, our DL06 would be in this class. 
small is going to be 129 to 512, getting up there in some of the I.O. range. You have things like uh, expansion, remote I.O., and a lot of specialty cards that you could pop into the PLC. And then last is going to be our large, which is 512 I.O. and above. Uh, modular I.O. high densities, like our 405 PLCs, you have 64-point cards. Um, you can often, often fit 2,000 I.O. in one local system. And you can see you get into more sophisticated specialty modules, some that are uh, take some brains to, to program.